Oh, speaking of Donald Trump, here's something. Apparently, Melania Trump may stay in New York permanently and won't ever move into the White House. Now, this is being reported. This is being reported. I'm not sure if we can believe that. Uh, because remember, last year we were all saying the same thing about her husband. <laughs> and I'm really surprised that she's not going to move, that they're not going to be together, mm -hmm. these two lovebirds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just look at them. Just, I mean, they're very. <laughs> we're clapping right. for love. Love. We're clapping for love. I mean, just, just, just look at them at the inauguration. Here he is. Big smile and <laughs> hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I'm very happy. I'm very happy for you, honey. And I voted for Hillary. <laughs> I'll tell you, someone who is enjoying living in Washington D.C. Look at this photo bomb by notorious Senate jokester. John McCain. <laughs> that, that is behind the head. Behind McCain. that is McCain's best prank since nominating Sarah Palin. <laughs> you had us there for a while. You had us going there for a while. Hey, hey, hey. I just want to point something out. Take a closer look. You'll notice those aren't bunny ears. They're devil horns, baby. <laughs> la la. That's just a throwback from when Senator McCain played bass for Slayer. Everybody, everybody's talking about politics these days. Even Matthew McConaughey is getting political. McConaughey said, it's time for us to embrace Donald Trump in this divisive time. Yes, he said that about Trump. He's even supporting Steve Bannon. Because he said it's, no, 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 it's true. He did, because he said it's time for us to embrace the all right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I work on my I gotta work. I really have to work on McConaughey impression. I don't know that's not very good. All right. Do you know who might be watching the show right now? Actually, Donald Trump might actually be watching oh, the show wow. because we know he watches yeah. a lot of TV. Yeah, check it out. Last week, Trump told the New York Times he rises before 6 a.m., watches television tuned to a cable channel. Then, after a long day's work, Mr. Trump, who does not read books, is able to end his evenings with plenty of television. Oh, if only the West Wing were still on, he could learn how to be president of the United States. If only, if, if, we miss you, Josiah Bartlett. And he's a very engaged TV viewer. After Chelsea Manning was released from prison, Trump tweeted that she was ungrateful traitor Chelsea Manning. Uh -huh. Turns out that tweet came minutes after Fox News ran a graphic calling Chelsea Manning an ungrateful traitor. Oh. Which might also explain the president's follow-up tweet, 15 minutes could save you 50% or more in your car insurance. <laughs> Hashtag tremendous. <laughs> and tremendous. <laughs> and uh, people are starting to notice that you can talk to President Trump directly through the TV tube. <laughs> Last week, uh, Democratic Representative Elijah Cummings went on the Coffee Joe Morning Show and said this. And to uh, the President, uh, I know you're watching. Call me. I want to talk to you. Hours later, Trump called him. <laughs> and the nonprofit group Stand Up Republic wanted to reach Trump directly, so they're airing commercials on Morning Joe that address Trump's relationship with Russia and dare him to come clean. Now, in Trump's defense, it is hard to come clean after what happened to that mattress. <laughs> the. Whoa, watch that thing go from the dog. It ain't that cool, man. Yeah. That's, that's a fine family joke, folks. <laughs> The administration continues to shake things up. White House press secretary and stranger at the bar who wants you to know he would have left Barbara anyway, Sean Spicer, <laughs> has started taking questions over Skype from alternative media, like, like this one from a talk show radio host. I want to go to my third Skype seat, Lars Larson of The Lars Larson Show. Commander Spicer, it's a pleasure. Thanks for your service to America and thanks for the opportunity. I've got a broad question. Yeah, I have a broad question, too. How are we seeing you when your head is so far up Sean Spicer's ass? <laughs> that was... Oh. Mm -hmm. he, had, he had the headphones on. He also needed a snorkel. Now, 
<laughs> well, here, here was Lars's question for President Trump. Can he tell the Forest Service to start logging our forests aggressively again to provide jobs for Americans, wealth for the Treasury, and not spend three and a half billion dollars a year fighting forest fires? Good point. We wouldn't have all these expensive forest fires if we just got rid of all the forests first. <laughs> and that wasn't the only radio show Spicer's taken questions from. Here's the next question he took. Hey, Senior Spicer, you're on Hot 1035, The Wreck with Ziggy. And the Gooch! <laughs> <laughs> All right, our question is, how is Trump going to bring back American jobs? Hey, I'd like a job, Ziggy. Probably one from a hand. What? <laughs> and to the boner, Gooch. You know it. All right, all right, all right. Hey, Spice Man, follow up. <laughs> What is Trump going to do about Iran? Is he ready to use the nuclear option if they keep provoking with dangerous missile tests? You got goots! <laughs> uh.